Tips, tricks, and tools for taking photos of coins and other small objects. Why would you want to take photos of coins? To have a photographic record of your collection. Enlarge the coin to see details such as mint marks, edge lettering, double die, etc. Or maybe selling coins online such as eBay, VCoin, or other places. Tip number one. Know what type of camera you are going to use. You can have a cell phone, which is has a camera built in it. A point-and-shoot camera, which is a usually a small camera that has a built-in zoom. There is a bridge camera, which is like a point-and-shoot camera. It has a bigger lens and longer zoom. A DSLR is a camera with an interchangeable lens and it has a viewfinder. It has a mirror in it to let you see through the viewfinder. It comes in two types, a crop sensor and a full frame. And then you have a mirrorless camera which is fairly new to the market still. It is a camera that also has interchangeable lenses but it does not have the viewfinder because it no longer has the mirror in it like the DSLR. Here you can see the different types of cameras and different things that they do. Like um, you can see where it says on a cell phone that has an on-screen display. You can actually attach it to a tripod with an adapter. The lens type on the cell phone is a fixed lens. And then it's the average sensor size and the average megapixels. Point and shoot and bridge camera. Basically have an on-screen display. Some of them do have a viewfinder. Uh, most of them will have a tripod mount. The point and shoot has a short zoom where the bridge camera has a longer zoom. The sensor sizes is about the same and so is the megapixels. DSLR, the crop center, the full frame, you can use the viewfinder. You can also use the on-screen display. They have tripod mounts. They have the interchangeable lenses. The sensor size on the prep sensor is smaller than the DSLR full frame camera. And the average megapixels on the crop sensor is smaller than the average on the full frame cameras. On the mirrorless, you basically have an on screen display. Some may have a viewfinder, but it's a digital viewfinder. They should have a tripod mount, they have interchangeable lenses. And their sensor is actually smaller than the DSLR cameras. And the average megapixels is about 24 right now. Here is a where you can see comparison of how much difference the sensor in the different cameras is. You can see where the Light blue box is the full frame camera. The orange is the DSLR crop sensor camera. Mirrorless is the red pinkish color. D 
the yellow is the bridge camera point and shoot and the cell phone is the dark blue this is a list of how big can you actually print the depending on the number of megapixels your camera has as you can see with like three megapixels it will only produce a seven by five and that's at 300 dots per inch which is standard in printing most of the cameras these days are in the 12 16 24 range in the megapixels which you're looking at 15 by 10 inch frame picture to uh 20 by 13 inch picture but there are some cameras that can produce the 50 megapixel which is 30 inches by 20. so what do you need in a camera to take a photo of a coin well things that you would have to ask is what size do you plan on making your photo are you going to crop into your photo if you're going to, are you going to zoom in on the computer to try to see details closer if you're planning on cropping or zooming in you are going to need more megapixels if you plan on making a large A large photo you want to have as many megapixels as you need at least for the size that you plan on having the photo to be tip number two lighting the more light you have on camera can be better for your camera the way the camera works is that it needs light in order to take the image try taking photos in a well-lit room you may have to turn on some lamps in the room you can also use desk lamps uh, swing on lamps to get light closer to the coin you can buy a small shooting tent which gives his lights built in it and it also gives an even control source of the light not all lights are the same color you may have to let the camera know what type of light you have this is called white balance outside light from the sun is bluish in color inside light can be one of three colors blue which is a daylight cool and sunlight even by a window sunlight will cast a blue shadow or a blue light actually into the house You have orange lights, which is usually referred to by being warm, soft white, or amber. And then you have green, which is the fluorescent tubes. This is usually found in commercial buildings. Using a flash is not ideal for coins. It will reflect light back off of the flashback. It, on the coin this is actually a picture of a light tent it's a square box with one side open you can put different color backgrounds in it this is a picture of a coin taken from inside the light tent this is the same coin but 
with the flash on the camera turned on. As you can see, it basically washes away the coin. There are settings on the camera to control how much light is let in. This is called exposure. You have ISO, which is how sensitive the sensor is for light. The low number of the ISO, the more light you have to have. The higher ISO, the less light you have to have, but it will add noise or grain to the photo. Shutter speed is how long the shutter is open. You can have a short shutter speed or a fast shutter speed in which then you're going to need to have more light. You can have a long shutter speed in which then you can are going to need less light. Aperture controls the amount of light that reaches the sensor, kind of like how your pupil works on your eye. A large aperture, it allows a lot of light in, but it will cause things to get less in focus. Where a small aperture will, you, you will need to have more light, but more of the image will be in focus. For coins and small objects where you are controlling the settings, use spot metering or center metering to set the correct exposure. This is the exposure triangle. If you change like ISO, then you're going to have to change, if you have the correct exposure, you're going to have to change like shutter speed, or you're going to have to change the aperture to keep the correct exposure. This is how I get the correct white balance and correct exposure. This is where I'm putting the white card in front of the camera. Then I go into my settings, go to white balance, and I actually take a picture of the white card to set how much light, the color of the light to the camera. And then I can switch the white card to a gray card. which is actually 18% gray. And then I just adjusted the shutter speed. So that's 1 40th of a second. My f-stop here was 7.1 and the ISO is 1600. Tip number three, prevent camera shake. Camera shake is where the camera moves while taking a photo. The image can come out blurry, out of focus, not sharp. This is where you will s just a little bit of movement can completely Take something that you think you have in focus and completely make it not in focus. Tools to, tools to prevent camera shake. A tripod. It will hold the camera. It stabilizes it. Uh, use a remote trigger. 
is a device in which you can release the camera remotely. A wireless one is actually better because you can still shift the camera with a cord uh, remote. And they even make like Bluetooth um, remote triggers for cell phones these days. Settings in the camera that can prevent camera shake. You have Im image uh, stabilization built into the camera or lens. This prevents camera shake. You have mechanical stabilization, which is a, design, a de device that moves inside the camera to keep the image stable. You also have digital stabilization where the sensor uses image the image and uh, software tracking and the image movement on the sensor to prevent to give it uh, stabilization. Some cameras you can have both of these turned on at the same time. You can use a delay timer which will give you a couple of seconds, maybe even uh, up to 10 seconds once you push the shut the button say on the camera itself it will give you about two seconds 10 seconds for the camera to stabilize and then take the photo uh, you can change the shutter speed using a faster shutter speed will decrease decrease the time that the shutter is open which gives you less time for the camera to move. Uh, caution with this though is that if you do a real fast like one hundredth of a second, you're gonna need to have more light, increase the ISO, or increase the aperture depth number on the camera. On DSLR you can set it to live view which will take the mirror and, f and lock it up in position in which now the mirror doesn't move when you take the photo. This also lets you see the image on the screen before you take the photo. And since you kind of turn your DSLR into a mirrorless camera. Tip number four, fill the whole image with the coin. You're going to want to try to use as much of the sensor of the, your camera as possible by filling it, the image on, by filling the camera image with the coin you're using this most of the sensor. You can also take a photo of just a small detail in the coin like a mint mark or date. Optical zoom is mechanical. There is a digital zoom but that basically is just cropping the photo. Some cameras have a macro mode, which lets you get the camera closer and makes the coin or whatever you're taking a picture of actually be bigger in the and more on the sensor. It's usually indicated by a flower symbol. Also, you may see like a mountain that would be more for landscape and far away photography. You can also buy a macro lens to use on a DSLR or a mirrorless camera to take close up photos. This is a decade lens 
that can let you take close photos. You can use close-up filters on DSLR or mirrorless camera lens to change the focal distance of that lens as a magnifying glass. It acts as a magnifying glass in front of the lens. Extension tubes are used between the DSLR or mirrorless camera and the lens. It goes behind the lens and this changes the focal distance of that lens, which results in a closer photo. You can also use extension tubes and close-up filters together. You can even use extension tubes in the close-up filters on a macro lens. This photo was taken with a close-up filter. One thing that a close-up filter will do is it will add, it adds a piece of glass with can distort the image slightly on the camera. This is what extension tubes look like. This is actually three different sizes. And yes, you can actually use all three at once. This is a photo taken with an extension tube. The extension tube does not add any glass to the camera. Uh, some extension tubes allow to send information to the lens, which is important because that can control like the aperture and all. Some do not, in which then you're basically shooting at the highest aperture, which is actually the smallest opening on the lens. So if you are to buy an extension tube, I recommend getting one that can communicate to the lens. This is a photo with an extension tube and a close-up filter. As you can see, it got more the coin more than use the whole sensor and then get all of the coin in it. This was taken with a, just the extension tube and you can actually read the edge lettering on this round. This is a close up of a mint mark and date. This was done with um, both an extension tube and a close-up filter. Tip number five. Different color backgrounds can give a coin a different look. And you can use a light table for shadowless and pure white background. A light table is a light that you can actually place objects on top of for taking photos. This is just to show how the coin differs on the different color backgrounds. The white is actually on a light table. This is what a light table looks like. Here's a close-up or a bigger picture of the coin from the light table. There is an alternative to instead of using a camera, you can actually use a scanner to scan coins on a flatbed scanner and push and start is a quick way to capture details. Scanners do have settings for file type, bit, and the resolution. Bit is um, usually is how many colors it will represent, 
resolution is how many pixels it will actually capture in an inch. File choices are usually um, BMP, TIFF, JPEG, and PDF that you will find on the scanner. I recommend using JPEG for most images. It will be easier to transfer the files. You, a TIFF is a lossless type of image file, and so is a bitmap EMP. They both will take up a lot more space. This is what 24-bit color looks like. This was also at 300 DPI. This is a 48-bit color at 300 DPI. This is the 300 DPI, and it is the same image of the 24 bit. 600 DPI, you can see it actually gets clearer. 1200 DPI, I didn't see much difference between the 600 and the 1200. This is a 48-bit at 4,800 DPI. This is the maximum my scanner will let me do, which is the most amount of details. And this took about two minutes to scan. In conclusion, cameras and scanners are both a good way to get an image of a coin. Knowing how to use the equipment can produce better images.